the one who told me I was pregnant. That's Understood. the last one that I have. We have had with... sex. I have sex with both of them. I can have friends. That all you've done is the thirty dollars. If he's not the biological father, he she's so his sure that she knows. Too low. Your he Honor, don't deserve I it. I was there for my other two children about her. Mr. Allen was in court because of neglecting his one-year-old daughter, whom he had only met once. By now, we know such situations call for drama, which is just the right cue for the paternity dispute lying ahead. Exactly. You are in court today to prove Mr. Allen is the biological father of your one-year-old daughter, Italy Begley. Yes, Your Honor. You say Mr. Allen has only seen his daughter one time since she has been born, and you want him to take responsibility starting today. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Allen, you say you are more than certain you are not Italy's biological father and claim Ms. Beckley's accusations are driving a wedge between you and your fiance. The foundation of this love story? Separation, co-parenting, and a dash of angry sex. Yep. We are about to enter the soap opera of Beckley and Allen, and calling their relationship a sarcastic joyride would be an understatement. Um, the time of conception made me have doubt, strong doubts, that the child is not mine. So where was your relationship? What was the nature of your relationship during the time when Italy was conceived? Well, me and Ms. Beckley had separated. We were co-parenting. We were still good friends. That's not um, true. On Germany's second birthday, he wasn't staying with me, but he ended up coming back on her birthday. We had sex, unprotected. It wasn't baby-making sex. Whether it's fueled by anger, sadness, happiness, or confusion. Discarding caution in intimate moments leads to consequences. All sex can result in babies, but the defendant was here to teach his own lesson in sex eddie. After that, did you find out she was pregnant? Within a day or two? We have sex that I'm pregnant. That don't even make sense. That don't make sense. One or two days after, you're like, she's already pregnant. Yes, Your Honor. It ain't no telling who else she didn't let hit before I hit, you feel me? You need to stop lying. Your Honor. You're a liar. So wait, I want to understand from you, Miss Beckley. So it was after a month when I found I was pregnant. I called to let him know I was pregnant. And from then, it was like, oh, you're, you're, that don't make sense that you got pregnant too fast. In a plot twist, the conception unfolds in a storm of angry emotions. Baby daddy's reaction to the unexpected news sends shockwaves. On top of that, mommy's refusal of the DNA test on more than one occasion didn't help the situation either. You denied me a DNA oh, test. Twice. Okay. Twice. And now you're telling me I don't deserve it? I have, I have children, and all of them have my last name. I didn't have my biological father in my life. So I would be, it would be a shame for me not to step up for mine. It would be a shame. You denied her from the point I told you I was pregnant to now. Hold on. The point is, I'm trying to understand your doubt, Mr. Allen. She denied me the DNA twist not once, but twice. Oh, boy. Amidst these conflicting stories, the timeline of conception grows increasingly chaotic. Miss Beckley's pregnancy was welcomed by raised eyebrows, and the doubts surrounding it, safe to say, they intensified when mommy didn't let the daddy-daughter establish a bond. Raising her going through the pregnancy by myself. A whole year? All this stress. A whole year? You denied me a you DNA test for a whole it. year? I didn't deny you nothing. A you whole, got two legs, you put a one down there and went to the court. Hold on, let's get, let's get some order. Let's get some order. Let's get some order. Because I'm starting to understand what's going on here. This is a dance y'all do. You know this choreography. Arguing and dysfunction and yelling and back and forth. You all do this well. Next up, the baby daddy accuses the mama some more. He didn't have his fill, it seemed. After throwing around a serious accusation, the plaintiff blew up on him. Oh, she wasn't gonna let him get away with it. As a, as, as a man, I have, I, have been, I have been really struggling to make things work co-parenting with Shania. There's, there's straight disconnection. She's nothing but the biological mother of my children. There's disconnection and communication. You got a lot of nerves. She, you on child support for two of your kids, 45 a month, you can't even pay that. Like she said, she has me on child support. She get all the assistance. Well, 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 Mr. Allen was just begging to be scolded by the judge, wasn't he? You can try talking over the plaintiff all you want, but you can't talk over the judge. FYI, harsh reality checks are coming through. Don't talk over me, because if you had the answers, you wouldn't be here. I just don't like Hold being on. put down. You're I don't not like being put down no, about my kids. No, 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 you're I not being- asked her for a DNA you test. Don't like being told the truth. But Mr. Allen, you sat here as a dad and expressed with good intention your desire to be the dad you never got to have. And what I'm saying to you is that doesn't mean that you've got to create more children to be the best father. Moving on, the fiance of the defendant showed her love and support for him. And she wasn't a fan of the mommy, that's for sure. To heck with court decorum. These ladies were ready to have a brawl then and there. Uh-oh. He has told Darius that he was not the father. It's been said that she's told another guy he was the father. Okay, y'all got proof of that? And y'all fiancés, what a ring at? Girl, mind your business. What a ring at, right. You have no business. That's why you're here. You speak with because you worried about... Was you in the bed with me and him when we had her? 
let's, 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 no. let's get let's get some order. Take a breath. Before more disruption could be caused, Judge Lake put a stop to their bickering and went straight for the answers they came here for. Maybe that would shut them up. One can only hope, given how these guys loved to go at each other. Here are the much-awaited results. Mr. Allen, you are the father. Told you. You too, fiance. Stepmama. Stepmama. Stop. Stop. Your Honor. You all are still very much tied. Love triangles, questionable decisions, and a dash of financial chaos. The paternity showdown. Between Miss Reed and Miss Austin had it all. Better buckle up, because these guys were about to spill more tea than your favorite reality show. Uh, Miss Reed, you are demanding that Miss Austin have a paternity test administered on her child, whom she claims was fathered by your estranged husband. Yes, Your Honor. You're hoping the DNA test will prove that your husband is not her baby's father. Additionally, you are suing his mistress, Miss Austin, in the amount of $5,000 for alienation of affections. Enter the full drama. We're on the brink of discovering how Miss Reed found out her hubby had a whole mistress on the side. A classic tale of a love triangle served with a side of amnesia, as Mr. Wallace conveniently forgot to mention his marital status. Bravo! Then one day I came in from the hospital from having my second child, um, and Rayel's phone rang, and I just so happened to answer the phone. And the, Mrs. Austin, she said, I'm Rayel's girlfriend. I said, Rayel's girlfriend, did you know that Rayel was engaged to me or whatever and just had a baby? She said, no. I packed my things and I left with my two kids at the time. Now, Mrs. was hurt discovering her dearest husband's extracurricular activities. Yeah, we are talking about the mistress who was quick to claim innocence. And no, she did not stop there. Nope, she blamed her for not keeping her guy entertained. He nor told me that they was engaged, neither. I found out on Facebook that Rayelle and Mrs. Reed was married when she posted a picture up there of their marriage life. That's when I found out. And yes, I did confront Ryan about the marriage, but at the same token, Ryan would never came to me if Dominique was Miss Reed was taking care of home, right? Shots were being fired left and right. Hold your breath now, because after hubby stealing drama, these guys jumped straight into baby daddy drama. But before that, it appears Miss Reed tried to beat the mistress at her own game. Wow. Yeah, I he was staying telling her that he needed money to get away from me, but the money that she was sending, Rayel, he was taking me out with her money, or he like if my kids, my, my child or whatever, needed pampers or milk, he'll take that money and go buy them the things that they needed. So now, Ms. Austin, you claim that Mr. Wallace is the father of your child. Yes. About time, the real player of this game graced the court with his presence. Well, he just stepped up with no care or remorse in the world, for that matter. Oh, Mr. Roniel, you are one sleazy dude. You married to Ms. Reed. Yes. But you were sleeping with Ms. Austin. Yes. You had a baby with Ms. Reed. Three. Yana. Three. Correct. You might have a baby with Ms. Austin. Allegedly. You busy. Oh boy, the mess that these guys have created with their miserable actions. It appears the baby daddy suspected the defendant's child, not his either. Bring in the despair, because these guys brought babies into this dirty mix as well. So do you believe her child is your child? No, ma'am. Why is that? Because she has. Don't you say no, boy, she look just like you. She, she look just she like, like you. Other she guy. got everything, she, everything you want, she got on that, everything. She look like the other guy who is currently her boyfriend. I had sex with Ryan first, and I used unprotected sex with Ryan and I used protective sex with the other boy, but Your Honor, she's lying. Moving on, Ms. Reed ended up an emotional mess while playing the blame game. However, the alleged baby daddy still maintained his despicable character of a SP called Cheater. Oh, the audacity of this dude. She didn't know what was going on, like she said. Ryan was sitting up lying to her, so I can't really blame her. But uh, then again, I can't because she knew all about me and still slept with my husband. She still was in a relationship with my husband. It's not her fault we're not together. It's your fault. And you're right. It's my fault because I left you. That's why we're not together. Because I left you and went out and talked to someone else. That's why we're not together. So then again, it's your fault why we're not together. In a twist of events, a surprise witness stepped forward. Yep, this case had one more trick up its sleeve, and I bet you won't guess what this woman claimed next. Man, oh man, Mr. Roniel had been one busy bee. I also have a family old child by Mr. Wallace that he claims to be not the father 
you also have a five-month-old child mm -hmm. that you say was fathered by Mr. Wallace, but he's denying that child as well. Yes. Hold on one second. Just one second. We're going to get down to the bottom of this, but first, I need to deal with the people in front of me. Oh, there was now more than one paternity test to go through. It just keeps getting crowded now. Two women were already at each other's throats. You put three together, a whole other level of messiness unlocked. But we gotta get to the results of Ms. Austin. Mr. Wallace, you are her father. I told you, dummy. She looks just like you, dummy. Everything, dummy. After that revelation, it was time to tackle the next one. M.S. Roberts was here to get some answers as well. Because guess what? Her baby was being denied by the defendant as well. Man, this guy needed to be stopped. Is the father of your five-month-old son, Danielle. You have asked the court to administer a lie detector test to prove he's still trying to be with you. Mr. Wallace, you say that if the results come back negative, you would like her to stay away from you and your current girlfriend, Ms. Austin. So this guy had a wife, a girlfriend, and a mistress. Well, didn't he like to go through women like a game? And when asked for his defense against this baby in question, safe to say it was the same as the last one. Not so bright, huh? All these women. And it was the guy that played the role of the big old victim. Yeah, you heard that right. Right when the wife was about to narrate the events that led her to find out her husband impregnated two women around the same time. These women were at each other's throats. Get ready for a rumble, people. Trying to confuse me, <laughs> Ms. Austin. Right. I'm found okay. to be Ms. Wallace. Whoa, oh, I'm sorry. Soon to be Ms. Correct. Oh, my God. Correction. Oh, my God. Right, yeah, so This baby mama was exasperated by the defendant and his denial of paternity of her daughter, but she was now ready and armed to the teeth to fight it out and determined to conclusively establish the truth. Miss Spruill, you are furious that you had to file a paternity case against the defendant, Mr. Dixon, due to his denial of your daughter, Skaya. You say you know the exact night you conceived and he is her father. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Dixon, you claim that your relationship with Miss Spruill was purely sexual sexual and one conversation that occurred is the only proof you need that her child is not yours. Is yes, that correct? Sir. So let's dive into the sordid love affair, which began with a casual rendezvous, a little Netflix and no chill. Nah, just kidding. But you're up for a surprise as their relationship seemingly headed towards a full-blown romance with Mr. Dixon moving in. The exhibit and the story presented a whole different version. Don't claim this child is mine because I have serious doubts about this child. It's been multiple You just came to her last say, week. Like I said, multiple you just came to see her last week, though. Did you go see the you baby last week? You just came to see her last week. Played with her, mm -hmm. spent the night with her, and all. Well, you know, I wanted to go check on her because. Why would you check on a child that's not yours? Well, y'all, look here. Let me explain this, y'all. Can uh, first I want to start off about my doubts about this child. So the supposed daddy put on his hat and began questioning the pregnancy like a detective on a crime scene. Lies, doubts, and a dash of betrayal made this courtroom tango uh, a bit extra spicy. Ouch. Um, I have doubts that this is my child. Why? Because Kamaya is constantly lies. Oh. Wow. She even lies about this baby. It was a time when she was pregnant. She she said I slip and fell in the tube. Your you text me, you text me, me to the saying, you text me saying you're in the ER the whole entire time, but once I'm on the phone, His you're in the living room. took me to the hospital. Giggling, laughing, playing His with sister. your son. And as far as the co-worker telling his family member, that same co-worker got on the phone with me and his family member and let it be known his family member was mistaken. What was supposed to be work move turned out to be a fun one instead. Ms. Spruill was not happy with the Alabama activities, for obvious reasons, of course. It's more like a skeptical moonwalk with a side of drama. Can you smell the awkwardness? Because I sure can. Mr. Dixon ran off to Alabama when his daughter was one, one month old, to say he was working. He wasn't working. He was not working. You, you want to know to Alabama how? to Recap. get a better job. Oh, no, no. To make more money. Our but daughter. It's constantly lying. It's coming daughter, from her. One at a time. Our daughter, it wasn't even seven months. Mr. Dixon had a whole nother child. Why he was still with me. Get ready for some head scratching moments cause this case was all over the place. Baby mama claimed that daddy knew about the pregnancy before she like some kind of pregnancy wizard. Then why the denial now, huh? He is the one who told me I was pregnant. He said I was pregnant because he throwing up everywhere. He said I was pregnant. Cause he was throwing up. He was throwing up. Your honor, let me tell you about that, your honor, about that. <laughs> I had a hangover. 
We got drunk one night and I had a hangover and I threw up at five, six o'clock that morning. So why did That's you call me you to find out when I was pregnant? Cue the dramatic music as we dive into the birth certificate saga. Despair and anguish surround the courtroom like a dark cloud. Who's on it? Who's not? And what was up with the baby's name? Change fiasco. Oh, there was a lot to unpack. He, everybody knew I was pregnant by then. Because at first, they were saying I was lying about being pregnant because Mr. Dixon kept telling him I wasn't. Even though he went to the All she do is lie. You don't know what to you believe. You went with me! How did I lie? You, you went with me. So did you go with me to the appointment? Did I you? Were you there when they said I was pregnant? No, I wasn't there when they Oh, you wasn't came there? Back with the results. Oh, and didn't they tell you to come to the back? So we didn't go to the back and talk to that nice I lady. I was never there. Moving on, the baby mama could not help but share how the baby daddy had been running in and out of her and her child's life. Yep, Mr. Dixon had a fondness for Alabama and running away from problems. Because the day we were supposed to go get a change, Mr. Dixon ran right back off to <laughs> Alabama. Lies. Oh, we you did? Of time. I didn't leave. You I were there for a week. You was there the first week of her life. Mr. Dixon. I didn't leave back to Alabama until a month later. We had plenty of time to change his name. I don't talk to a so, company every day. Let's go get this baby name changed. I got the money. Lies, Let's go. Lies, Let's go. Lies, no, it's his excuse. Drum roll, please. The moment of truth arrives, and we're about to unveil the paternity bombshell. Who's the daddy? Who's not? Get ready for the ultimate plot twist in this courtroom thriller. About time we heard the side of the defendant. Whatever he said was not helping the situation, because mommy seemed ready to strike him down whenever he stepped out of line, which was quite Quite a lot. Mama, you constantly lies. Why do you lie? Even when no, this baby was born, what, when was even when this baby was born, let, let she lied. Testify. She even lied on the baby. First, okay, it started when you fell asleep, fell into it. You at the ER. You text me the whole time. You at the ER, but yet you in the living room, get laughing and giggling with your son and everybody else. Like Why I mean, do that? Then it come to a point. When you instead of saying this baby got blood transfers, blood transfers, blood transfers, four or five blood transfers, baby the baby got a brain problem, the baby got a hole in the heart. Moving on, it seems the alleged mommy-daddy duo couldn't help attacking each other. By the looks of it, the sweetest day weekend was the memorable time when this chaotic journey took off. Want to know what that is? Let's hear it. Oh, okay. how can you watch your child grow up through Facebook for an entire year, but you can't pick up the phone and call her? You have another dude on Facebook that oh, you made a video kissing and playing together. Okay, I got one at a time. After around September Wait. 2015, I got into a relationship with somebody because Mr. Dixon was no longer in the pitch. Drum roll, please, because the moment of reckoning was here. We're about to unveil the paternity bombshell. Who's the daddy and who's not? Mystery was about to have either a closure or a whole lot of drama. Mr. Dixon, you are the father. Thank you. You are her father. Thank you. I do. <laughs> How do you feel, Mr. Dixon? I'm excited. <laughs> I have a brutal little ba beautiful baby girl. Hold on to your DNA swabs, folks. We've got a case here that's hotter than a Kardashian scandal. A tale of questionable paternity, tangled relationships, and a whole lot of drama was heading straight your way. Buckle up! This roller coaster was just getting started. Miss Parker, in your suit, you claim Mr. Morton fathered your seven month old son, Aaron, while in a relationship with his current girlfriend. Yes, Your Honor. You say the only reason he denies paternity is because his girlfriend turned him against you because she's been unable to conceive a child with him. Yes, Your Honor. So how come the mama ended up in tangled sheets with a man who already had a girlfriend? Well, wouldn't you like to know? And guess what? Ms. Parker did not shy away from revealing the twist in their three equation. How did you end up having sex with Mr. Morton if he has a girlfriend? First of all, Your Honor, that's my big father. Anytime I want to have sex with him, I'm going to have sex with him. You understand? Like, I was vulnerable. He called me. So, you know, we did what we did. Oh, this just got interesting. And it's about to get even worse as the said girlfriend was not on board with the version the baby mama presented. Is anyone surprised by that? I sure am not. What a mess, man. The only reason why she was able to have sex with us is because I asked my boyfriend to have sex with her because she was lonely. My desires, me and my little freakiness, I said, my boyfriend, can you have sex with your pregnant baby mother because she's in need? Pause, Your Honor. How would she know Pause, she's Honor. not there? Your Honor. That is not true. So these guys agreed to have three-way fun, but had issues with conception dates. Well, ain't that fascinating? A saga of vulnerability, late night phone calls, and a love affair tangled enough to make Shakespeare dizzy. Boy, this case was a soap opera of modern relationships that dove right into a paternity skirmish. She so supposed I wanna to have got pregnant your doubt. in May. But from my understanding, that's only would be seven months if she I had never said I got pregnant in May, Your Honor. Okay, hold on. L let me get my calendar so I can just understand what's going on exactly. When were you intimate with Miss Parker 
the week during the of, wind the week of mother's day may 11th i believe now hold on to your calendars because we're entering the conception chaos the confusion was palpable as these guys struggled to piece together the puzzle of when where and how this little bundle of drama was created I, were you having sex with anyone are you serious your honor you i listen my i do what i do <laughs> i'm not i love i love me you understand me i don't have unprotected sex with nobody but the ones that i trust i trust this man so yeah every time i have sex with him you I'm think protected. me so bad every so you trust time. Me too it was clear the boyfriend girlfriend duo was not buying this story but the plaintiff seemed pretty confident about her guy guess it's this confidence that created this whole paternity mess huh and the timing dilemmas didn't let the daddy sign the good old birth certificate i told him i was pregnant and i did i'm not gonna lie i told him this is not your baby being as though i have a sonogram telling me i'm 13 weeks so when i go to my first prenatal appointment and they give me a fetal assessment and they say no miss you're eight weeks pregnant your baby is due december the 24th now mr morton had doubts and yet his facebook page portrayed a whole other story of this wild ordeal. The guy went through phases of accepting and denying the baby boy, and the baby mama was so not happy with that attitude. Mr. Morton, it says my son's hands are always in the air. Yeah. You, you, you wrote that. Yeah. So if you had doubts, why would you post that? I know this man. You feel me? I know he loved people, kids. I know he loved children. I gave this man his first child. I know this. You understand and what I'm saying? she feel like she holds her and she don't. Once again. Enter a surprise witness next. Boy, do I love these surprises. They are just bound to spice things up. And that's what happened. There was disrespect, some shocking revelations, and things started heating up fast. Uh-oh. What do you have to add, ma'am? Well, for, for the most part, as far as support system, when she first had baby Aaron, she did not have anything because we were supposed to try to get together a baby shower. So she did have him early. So as far as support system, it was me and my daughter, which is Eric's sister, and Mr. Morton's sister. And her mother. And excuse me, I'm talking. It don't matter. It does. It don't. Now, any rational person would not continue with his mess, but you never know with these guys. Some could be gluttonous for such situations. However, they claimed to have washed things off with their entire arrangement. But before that, the girlfriend got in one last altercation with the mama, and it was enlightening, to say the least. Ben, What's the point of you knocking good. what we have? He's good. He's I mean, good. Ebony. I'm knocking it because what, of the fact honor, that I this never, is the reason why my son's been I never, first denied. of all, I'm, I, 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 this is out of character for me. I have never, ever in a yeah. million years came at this woman like this. It's one thing when you're sitting there stating facts, but it's another thing when you're trying to degrade. Time for the much-awaited results. Yep, Judge Lale was ready to deliver her final verdict to these people. The suspense was about to be lifted, and we we shall see whether what baby mama claimed was indeed true or not so much. Mr. Morton, you are Aaron's father. Thank you. I told you. Like, I'm not no. no. Come on. Take paper so I can go down with child support tomorrow morning when I get up. So, we've got Miss Moore here on a quest for her long lost dad. Her mom's knowledge of potential dads rivals a game of musical chairs. The courtroom's buzzing, and we're all strapped in, waiting for the paternity bomb to drop. Get ready for a DNA drama that's about to unfold, folks. Ms. Moore, you claim that you've lived your entire life asking the question, who is my dad? Yes, Your Honor. You say that during your childhood, your mother, Ms. Nelson, told you she had no idea. Yes. Sir. After years of heartache, you've located one potential father whom you've asked to be tested by the court today. Yes. It appears we've got boyfriends shuffling in and out like they're auditioning for a sitcom. And Ms. Nelson was so not happy with her daughter dragging her here. And before the court proceeding could begin, there they go about yelling at each other. That's the last one that I have. That's the last one at all that I have for okay. You never did give me the name. That's I gave you the gave name. No, of the you did not. not. 10 years old, I gave you it. No, you did yes, not. You, I have. You only gave me Greg Wright's name. No, that I'm was sorry. the last one that I gave you. Phew. That was some start to the case. But buckle up for some more, folks. Because as soon as M.S. Moore takes us back to the life she had in her childhood, mother defeats blew up. The hurt and betrayal ooze from every word, leaving us wondering who's really in the wrong here. During my childhood growing up, it was rough. You know, we've changed. We've never had a stable place, you know. I had changed schools like five to six different times. I couldn't have friends because I would have to take my mom's responsibility and like help raise the kid. You no, know? that's not right. Yes, that is no, right. It's yes, I did. We what? Who, took him on? Who took him on walks? Tough to sort out this one, huh? It's a sordid tale of promiscuity, regrets, and a revelation that hits harder than a cliffhanger. Oh, and let's not forget how defensive mommy was during this whole ordeal. Ms. Nelson, you're saying that you also grew up without a father. I grew up not knowing my parents. I vaguely, at eight years old, knew my mom. 
just vaguely. And I don't know who my father is. Yes, it has been hard, but I, I learned to deal with it. So you're acknowledging that it was very difficult for you not having your father, so you can understand how your daughter would feel. Time to step into the wild world of conception mayhem. We're talking about multiple men, hazy memories, and the desperate quest to figure out who played the leading role in this maternity saga. I had all the other ones tested. They came back negative. The only last one there was, she told me, says, well, do you know anybody else? And I was thinking, it's like, okay, since I had a bad childhood, I tend to forget things. And plus, I was 17, but I knew the name. I knew exactly where he lived. I knew when I was five months pregnant, because after I done split with him, he said he was gonna be in jail. And now we're getting into the nitty gritty with the possible fathers. But before the poor girl could get a word in, the beloved mommy would attack like none other. Oh, she was one vicious woman, and her only aim seemed to be over-talking the daughter. Primer, if I knew from a shadow of a doubt that he was dead set, the father, I would have told him. I would have wrote him to jail. Well, why was you afraid that I was going to get hurt? Well, what if he wasn't the father? Or because he's, not, who, giving, who is because the he's not giving you the money. So, Ms. Moore. It's not all about the money. Moving on from that spectacle, it seemed, these women were fond of shouting to get their point across. So much so there was no respect for court decorum. Mr. Wright joined this drama at last and shared his side of the story. And guess what? Mommy had a problem with this one, too. Don't need a piece of paper to saying he could just step up to the plate. Yes, I do. I need that piece of paper saying that he is my dad for health conditions. I have two kids I raised, Mom. I have, I have, you I know, have kids myself. They might have asthma that I don't know about that my dad could have, you know. They might some have some issues. I want someone there to support me and help me when I, I need help. You no, you have me. not. Woman, you can shout all you want that you have no problem with them bonding, but it was clear she had a big problem. It seemed the defendant thought her daughter was only after financial support, and that didn't sit too well with her. There they go, disrupting the court again with their brawling attitude. Every time that I don't have money or somebody does not have money, that's, that's what she wants. No, I just need someone and I'm there to there, And I'm there I to turn to him she the calls me every time of my she dad. Has a Okay. Ms. Nelson, so I'm trying to understand your point. About time we pull the curtain on this paternity drama. It was a wild ride indeed. Thankfully, though, the results were in, because these guys seem to be seconds away from going at each other again. Let's see what the future holds for this mother-daughter duo. Ms. Moore, Mr. Wright is not your biological father. <laughs> Three adults and two different mothers were in a paternity showdown. The suspense was building as these guys aimed to prove the identity of a mysterious father. Yep, all three claimed the single defendant to be the daddy. Well, good day, everyone. Good day. Good day. Three different adults with two different mothers brought the same defendant to court today in an effort to prove paternity. Mr. Heron and Mr. Medley, you are here to prove to Mr. Medley Sr. that you are indeed his sons. Yes, Your And Honor. say results of today's DNA test will force him to stop denying you. Well, if these guys were prepared, so was Mr. Medley Sr., who seemed to have left a trail of doubts and affairs. It's like a twisted love triangle over here. Even though he and baby mama ended up getting married, surprises were waiting just around the corner. I, I met her, I met her when I was playing in a band, which was about maybe three blocks from where she lived. She would come, she would be there, you know. And after about four weeks, she came up and introduced herself to me. But as time went on, I started hearing rumors that uh, she was having sex with other men. Here to start trouble. He said, well, she has been with him, but he didn't know that she was married. Oh. Oh boy, those doubts were as real as they could get. And they cut deep. Both herons had their reasons as to why they thought they were denied their whole life. And they laid them all out and open for the daddy to see. Was it betrayal? Or was there more to this complicated story? The reason why I think he's denying me is because when, I, when his mother died in 2007, he was nowhere in our lives before then. His mom came down for Christmases, birthdays, birthdays birthday, everything. Gave us and she everything. treated us like we was her grandkids. When she and she told us, no matter what, no matter what your daddy say, you guys are always going to be my grandkids. Grandmother kept saying, it's painful, they've been through enough. She would not allow me to do it. Moving on. The hurt and pain was pretty real with these guys. The hospital drama proved to be the last nail in the coffin for their parents' divorce. Yep, the absence of the father was glaringly obvious at that point. Because, huh? Take your time. I died three times in the hospital because of you, man. And I hate you for that. I want to let you know that. 
and with tooth stuff all on him because somebody buried him and we still don't know who did he. He said it was a babysitter that we don't even know about. We never seen this babysitter. Make sure, right, so me and my brothers wouldn't get split up. That's how they got divorced, was after that. After, that's, me, that, that's, after, I was after he got burnt, that's when they got divorced. Oh my goodness. There's a whole lot of emotional turmoil and the court was drowning in it. And we know how much of softy Lauren Lake is. So she jumped straight into the paternity of the two sons first. Cue the tears, folks. Victor Medley Sr. is the biological father of Maurice Heron. You are the father. No way. <laughs> to the results for Victor Medley Jr. Victor Medley Sr. is the biological father of Victor Medley Jr. That you are the father. Well, these results were certainly eye-opening for the daddy dearest, and the guy still had the audacity to just stand there and do nothing. Well, that won't fly with this court, nuh uh. It's taking all of my energy right now to not come off this bench and just hug them up. But what I do see in these young men is that if you would just take an honorable step in their direct, they would receive you. Thank you. I'm sorry to come to this. Love you, Next in line for a paternity test was Ms. Johnson. Now she grew up without a father, and at one point she just had enough of that. She took matters into her own hands, but her dear old mommy proved to be somewhat difficult. Oh yeah! In your statement to the court, you indicated you grew up not knowing who your father truly was. Yes, Your Honor. Tell me about that. Um, I grew up in and out of foster care, but I asked my mom one day, I was looking in my mirror when I was a teenager and I didn't look like her anymore. And I'm like, I don't know who I'm looking at. The stranger that I'm looking at in the mirror, I need to know. So the baby daddy had no idea he had a daughter. And then bam, Facebook gave him one heck of a surprise. However, the supposed father-daughter duo had slightly different versions of how the events went down. <laughs> oh! Up until this point, had you heard anything about you having a daughter? No, but I did not deny her. We didn't get into this DNA test until on Mother's Day. When I had over from Mother's Day, kept talking about, I need a DNA test. No. And so, Mr. Medley Sr., you claim that it was her asking for a DNA test? That's not true. So you had accepted her. Yes. But you claim she wanted the DNA test. Yes. Buckle up, people, because the plaintiff was on a daddy bashing train and she was not planning to slow down at all. Yep, guess she was done waiting all these years for him to step up. And now all she wanted was closure. I asked you, oh, I'm so happy. You're gonna send me a picture. Asked you, would you help me? I text you, you didn't text back. I called you, you didn't answer the phone. I left you a message, you didn't leave me a message back. I sent you a message on Facebook and I waited for at least a week and you did not answer me. So then I told you, delete them pictures off Facebook. Take my kids off Facebook. We don't want nothing to do with you. Gather some tissues, people. We are about to reveal the results. Yep, they were in for M.S. Johnson. Time to see whether love and forgiveness will take center stage or will the journey continue. Here goes nothing. Pertaining to whether Victor Medley Sr. is the biological father of Christian Johnson, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Medley Sr., you are not her father. Okay. The last time the plaintiff laid eyes on the potential father was 16 years ago, and now Mr. Gower was on a quest to prove that Mr. Ducas was his biological father. Are they ready for this emotional reunion? I think not. Gower, you are here to prove to Mr. Ducas that he is your biological father. You say after your mother's tragic death, you were told by your grandmother that Mr. Ducas is your dad. It has been more than 16 years since you laid eyes on the man you believe is your father. Are you ready to see him? Yes, Your Honor. The defendant straight up denied this possibility and seemed sure of that testimony. But wait till you hear what the son had to say in response. Man, he made something of his life despite his absence. And yet the void gnawed at him. Your Honor, I come here today to tell you that this has been real hard for me. This, been, this is an emotional moment for me. The fact that for 24 years of my life, not having no mother, losing her, and then the fact that my father just stranded me, knowing the pressure that I'm gonna have to deal with by myself of not being there for me, it hurts me. Even if I had a child of my own, I would never leave my child stranded. If that's my own blood, you cannot consider no man to me. You're a coward. The relationship backstory on Unfolded as Mr. Ducasse revealed that he used a withdrawal effort during their one-night stand. 
and boy did that add an extra layer of doubt to the situation. His reaction to the pregnancy news was hardly enthusiastic, to say the least. She basically made it clear to me that she wasn't sure if it was me or the other person that was involved. Well, if you wasn't, excuse me, Leroy, mm -hmm. why did you name him Sanchez after your best friend? You came to the hospital. You said you just had a one-night stand. Yes. After that happened, you know, I tried to basically just be there for her. We had progressively became more attached. It appears both parties had certain grievances with each other, and Mr. Ducasse had a whole list of them. Well, the judge simplified their issues for them, while being on the brink of tears herself. I loved a friendship, but it is your testimony that you were only intimate with her one time. Yes. Did she ever tell you that she told the other man that when she got pregnant, he was Mr. Gower's biological father? She, she didn't actually make it clear to who was. You, why would you not take a paternity test? Find a lawyer, anybody, and say, I may have a child out there. Safe to say, these guys had a lot of issues to work through. Well, they will keep the family counselors quite busy. Apparently, baby daddy pulled the vanishing act on the son and the trouble began. Interfered with a two-year long-standing relationship, right? I was like, what you couldn't say, irresponsible or diminished, you know, my, my obligation. At the time, I was adamant to the fact that there was no premises that could substantiate or validate any merit towards me being Sanchez's father. So the last 16 years without the father were just tragic for this guy. The grandparents had to step into the roles of parents for their grandchild, and the guy made a life for himself, which was nothing short of commendable and Lauren applauded that fact and more. It's been hard, it really has. And I try to stay strong and sometimes it's real hard, you know. That's why I want to major in child psychology because I hate seeing young kids, especially, go through stuff like this. How can men, and that's what I just don't understand, how can men have sex with women, get them pregnant, and then just leave them? When I hear you speak, I am so proud of you. As the case headed towards the conclusion, Mr. Gower took one last look at the defendant and raised the one question that kept nagging him all these years. Oh boy, you better gather some tissues, cause stuff was about to get real emotional. And when Judge Lake cries, you better believe it's gonna get you too. Imagine what you gotta go through, you know? And just then, no, listen to me. Listen, it's my time to talk. This is my time. And you gonna, and you gonna listen what I gotta say. I'm grown enough now. I'm not no little kid no more. I'm here to tell you that could you handle being in my shoes? Can you? Can you imagine what it's like walking across the stage and your parents is not there? From my perspective, at that time, there was a lot of maturing that I had to go through as well. What does that have to do with me? I warned you, you're gonna have tears and snot watching this young fella display all kinds of emotions. And there were more, as Laren Lake and Mr. Gower have one heart to heart. No, okay? that there was a lot of things that occurred with me. Why, it's not to say that I didn't care about to figure out whether or not I had a son or not, right? It's just that the fact that so much has compiled on me, even uh, health. I, I think he does understand the things you're saying. Okay. And I mean, A, he's a young man, mm -hmm. but at 24, I think he understands that life continues to happen. The moment of reckoning was here. The judge had the results, and we all are on the edge of our seats, aren't we? Let's see whether this decade-old mystery finally gets a conclusion or not. Mr. Duque. You are the father. <laughs> Lord have mercy, Jesus. <gasps> a father was here to battle for the paternity of his baby. Mommy had a change of heart and now sang a different tune. Different baby daddy. Let the paternity rumble begin. Good day, everyone. You say Jason is the most important thing in your life, and you are praying the results today turn out. Now, Ms. Garrett, you admit you slept with another man at the time your son was conceived, but you say that was only after the plaintiff strayed. You, too, are unsure about your son's paternity and are desperate for today's results. Brace yourself for a wild ride that was this relationship drama. So Mr. Deggs happened to get a surprise of a lifetime from his best friend. And guess what? The baby mama admitted to it, and that, too, without an iota of remorse. Ouch! At the time, we were moving out of my best friend's apartment. And uh, it was just about that I got the truck loaded up with everything. And I went upstairs to grab my last box and my best friend at the time pulled me aside and told me him and my brother had both slept with me. 
What? I was hurt. They both. Your both. Honor, he they cheated both. in the very beginning of our relationship. First cheated. Well, before you get to what he did, I want to know, is it true? Yes, it is true. Dear God, Ms. Guerin's pregnancy was just a maze of doubts, deceit, and a tangled web of infidelity. Loyalty was like finding a needle in the haystack. The baby mom betrayed the baby daddy in every way possible. From but you boyfriend. slept with my brother, too. Yes. You After. slept with my best friend and my oh. brother. So if, if OK, twice the Ms. pain? Ms. Guerin, please tell. Twice. Before. How did you end up with his brother, too? In somebody moved, else. I moved you in. in you paid else. nothing. You were taken care of. You worked you for did. the newspaper. You news moved paper. out of your mom's. Yeah. So you're, like, I did barely work for making the newspaper, it in a, but apartment. Still. Well, the origin of pregnancy was sketchy at best, and the defendant's actions led to more and more turmoil. Surely, after all this, the guy must bid farewell to the baby mama. Well, you guessed wrong. Oh, yeah, he stayed. I loved her that much that I wanted to work on it again. Wow. Because I loved it that much. Because he knew he cheated from the gate. No, because I loved yes. you. Okay. I loved had you, you. Had you cheated? Not until after. That's when I strayed. When you slept with my best friend and my brother is when I strayed. I realized, Diggs, maybe you cheated as well. However, yes. to the child, he was there. Yes, was he was there. there. I cut the cord. I've been there since day one taking care of this baby and this woman. The window of conception was murky. The confusion was real. And desperation? Well, that was an all-time high. The plaintiff stayed, and the mommy's response to that was just an okay. And that was so not okay with the judge. And you're the one that slept with his brother and his best friend, and you were the only one during the entire pregnancy that knew that there was doubt as to whether he was the, the father. So you you got to understand at least why he could be a little hurt. Of course. I had a rough childhood. Of course. I wanted I to be daddy. I just want to say that I did. Moving on, the baby daddy took us to the day the you are not the father got dropped on him. Turns out mommy had no knack for subtlety, huh? However, she claimed she wasn't cold and callous, though. I know, I know. Hard to believe that one? And I know where she throws at me. You're probably not even Jason, the daddy of Jason anyway. No, I, I crumbled right there. I started like crying. That. I would never what? do that. You told me after this long that I'm not the daddy and we're in an argument? What is it? Am I the dad or am I not? How you gonna break my heart like that? I love that little boy. And I know what it's like not having a dad there. So I wanted to be everything that I could be. You love your free time and, and all the women that you no, love you to love your hang free out time with more and hanging than out with this son. dude here. You would think that after that revelation, the guy would now be finally done with the woman. But nope, the man still stayed. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Ain't he proving that right? However, his current girl was supporting him though. So all's not lost, I guess. If I'm the father, like leaving, it bothered me every out. day. You know, I had so many different, I stayed you with her. You stayed with her again. I, again, again I stayed with her. So Jason and I ended up breaking up because I just couldn't, I couldn't do that to him. on him. And I couldn't do that to Jason. Why don't you tell the truth? So basically, you him too. you're here today father. because you feel as if Jason Mr. Diggs is a better parent than Ms. Garrett. 100%. <laughs> Oh my God. Thank now, the moment we've all been waiting for? Yep, the results were in and ready to be revealed. Judge Lake seemed to be just done with the attitude of the baby's mama and gave the final verdict. Oh, but Ms. Guerin was just begging for trouble. Well, she got a heavy dose of it. Mr. Day, you are not the father. Everything you've done thus far has been the right thing. That's all I've been trying to do is the right thing for him. A classic tale of devotion and deception was about to unfold here, folks. Mr. Jones had a dream come true, fatherhood. Sadly, it quickly turned into a nightmare. Mrs. Jones admitted to her infidelity. And now we're about to witness the most sarcastic dance of is she or isn't she in the world of paternity. Mr. Jones, you claim that after 48 years of trying to become a father, your dream became a reality. But that initial excitement turned into a nightmare as your wife admitted that she had been unfaithful. You now believe four-year-old Tamari is not your biological child, but will be crushed if the DNA results are negative. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So the baby mama finally let the cat out of the bag, though she did that during a heated argument. Oh, the betrayal. Hard to come back from that one, right? And on top of that, it appears mommy was in desperate need of biology lessons. That I have a baby, but... So you stepped up as a dad to do the right yes, thing. I did the right and thing, And yes. for the past four years, you've been there for tomorrow. I, I ain't, but yeah. the truth is, as you look at this beautiful baby, every day you're studying her features right, going, right, I don't see me. Right. At 48, I had the baby. Uh, Miss Joe, <laughs> no man can overpower his 
sperm. Yeah, one one time could just oh. Uh, it my... only takes one time. Well, the roller coaster continues as we learn how they ended up here. It seems the husband had a friend who was the informant catching Mrs. Red-handed, and that led to a revelation that shook their relationship to its core. Got a homeboy. He seen her leave the apartment and get in the car with other people, and he told me a couple of times about it, but I never believed him. And then I asked her about it, and then she came clean. And she told um, me. Wait, I thought at that moment, I, I, I thought in my head, I believed that he had someone and that that on the side. So I said, you know, you know, why put my all into it? I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna sit here and lie. It was about two times. The tit for tat game was biting back strong now, ain't it? Moreover, it seemed baby daddy had lived a hip happening life. And according to his exhibit, he failed to impregnate anyone in all those years. So how did he manage to do that to the wifey? Now, that was the million dollar question. Where you basically say you lost your virginity in 1981 and you've had 33 years of an active sex life and no one has ever gotten pregnant until 2014, yes, sure. which is your wife. Yes. You're saying, I've never impregnated anyone. Nobody never told me. And you've had multiple women. I had multiple women. Moving on, it appears Miss Jones was not aware that the doubts and reservations of her husband, Dearest, ran this deep, and that led to a pretty emotional altercation next. She was in the court now. No use keeping anything secret at this stage. It's very, very hard to talk about. I have done and said and a lot of things that I'm not proud of today. That I to would To your husband? To my husband. For my past to come back and bite me a I understand. <laughs> I love my husband, and I want my daughter to have what I never had, and I don't want this to be. The baby mama really wanted the husband to be the father. The marriage, along with the baby, hinged on those results. But before we go to that part, you have to watch how the baby mama appeared to be sure she got pregnant by Mr. Jones. I believe so. You believe you do know where he is. But I don't want... Honestly, I don't want him in our lives. Mr. Jones, yes. I can see the pain in your face. Your Honor, I don't understand all this. It's, it's so, it's hard right here. And, and one of the nights before, conceiving like like weeks before, because I only knew that I was pregnant around two months. The suspense has reached its climax, but no worries, because it was the results time. Will the baby mama get her wish fulfilled and this marriage get saved, or did that one mistake gonna cost her everything now? Let's find out. Mr. Jones. You are the father. <laughs> you are so kidding! <laughs> Two parties were locked in a fierce courtroom battle over paternity. Suspicion and doubt cloud the air as the alleged father and daughter stood divided, each questioning the truth. Can the DNA test provide the ultimate revelation? Let's find out. So neither of you believes that the man standing next to you is your biological father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Conrad. Yes, Your Honor. You claim you've given the plaintiffs no reason to doubt that he is her biological father and today's results will prove your case. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Horton, your daughter is 26 years old. Now let's dive into the specifics of this relationship because that's where all the drama resides. No, and bingo, there it was. It appears, while mommy was absolutely sure about paternity, daddy narrated all the incidents he caught the woman cheating. And a friend of mine, we were sitting at a party and I seen him give me eye. And I said, I'm not stupid. I said, okay, so I'm gonna act like I was going to bed. I heard the door shut real quiet. I knocked on the door, I said, let me in. He, you're not coming in. I said, is Brenda there? No. I said, let me in. Your he opened the door and she was in there. Miss Conrad, Honor. is this true? I have ran around on him, yes, I have. Miss Conrad stood there accused of infidelity, leaving Mr. Horton shattered. However, the guy was so not above using derogatory terms to describe her shenanigans. Now that was just rude. Who's really to blame in this messy affair? That was oh, wrong. I just got that. Um, okay. We want to be wrong. respectful in the courtroom. I'm, I'm trying to be respectful. I That's why I'll put it nicely. Miss Conrad, this is really upsetting you now. Why? <laughs> yeah, because it's not true. When it is so it, true. I'm not Your Honor, like that. Your Honor, My daughter wait, can Hold on. What part of it is is untrue? Well, the disrespect that he's given me. I'm not it's trying not to disrespect true. him, but you're trying to tell the truth. Rewind back. We get to know. These guys met when Mama was only 15 years old. Yep, the sweet 16 love. Meanwhile, the daughter couldn't help but praise Mama's beauty. And that struck all the right chords of the judge's heart. I was 15. You I were was, 15 when you yeah. met. So you were very young when you met. Yes. Yes, yes, you're right. And, and beautiful. 
sorry. Yeah. I'm so sorry. You, you don't ever have to apologize for saying your mother was beautiful. No, so you all start this relationship. And I'm not here to, you know, make anybody upset or nothing, but I see that you feel pulled I'm between my life, yes. your mother and your father. As the tale unfolds further, the plaintiff drops a bombshell. It appears the guy had beef with a mailman with blonde hair, blue eyes, and a beauty mark. The shockwaves rippled through the courtroom as he presented evidence to back it up. And we had, and we had a mailman that had light hair and blue eyes and had a beauty mark right here. I got a, My daughter has I got blue a, eyes, blonde hair, and a, birth, and a beauty mark and it's same little, exact spot. Cute. It's cute though. You have, you, there was a mailman <laughs> yes. in your town. No. Yes, there was. Sir, you brought an exhibit. Yes, ma'am. Okay, step over to it, All right, please. thank you. My daughter has blonde hair, the man would have blonde hair. The man would have blue eyes, my daughter's got blue eyes. The birthmark, I call it, or beauty mark, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> had the same mark, the same spot. Oh, the secrets from the past were resurfacing like crazy. But guess what? The mailman was news to mommy as well. Man, this courtroom drama was turning into a high-stakes reality show. But you know who this mailman is. He's talking no. about... You don't even remember this part. Oh, oh no, Your him. Honor. This is new to me. That's because there were so many of them. There, well, so the milkman. What happened to the milkman? Hold now on. it's the mailman. It was the milkman. Now it's the mailman. Well, you know, I mean, it's like a back and forth. Lying. A vice versa thing with him. You know, I, I don't know whether he can keep the right story or not. So wait, wait. First he used to say it was the milkman? With every twist and turn, the truth becomes a puzzle. And this had gone on for 26 years long years. Amidst this chaos, a past DNA test gets revealed, along with its results. But will that have any sort of effect on the dear old father? Let's see. Saying that you had a DNA test performed in the court? No, the court, or, uh, when they were in foster care. Mm -hmm. What were the results? 99% his children. Did you bring that evidence to court? Uh, they gave it to my lawyer that presented it to the judge, and the judge said it in court with his lawyer being there, too. Your Honor. Mr. Horton, have you ever seen this paperwork? That story is fabricated. There was no judge ordered anything. The daughter got lost during this plaintiff-defendant battle, and the poor girl was so on edge, she dared not to step on anyone's toes, be it her mother or the potential father. But the judge saw it all, and her silent suffering. Feeling torn in between their parents on any level, it is hard on the young person. As soon as this yes, court case began, Miss Horton was in tears. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is hurting her. And I've seen her during this case look at her mother and say something to her like, Mommy, I love you, or it's gonna yeah. be okay. Then she's got turned back to you. Daddy, I, I mean, I can see this tennis ball. The tension could not be the psyker than ever. The courtroom held its breath as the judge prepared to drop the bombshell. Who is the father? The revelation was seconds away. Here goes nothing. Better get some tissues in hand, just in case you know. Mr. Horton, you are the father. <laughs> Angela Monroe learned about Shaneka Reed's pregnancy in a deeply poignant context. After the death of her son Herbert, the potential grandma being terminally ill and in the midst of grief, was confronted with a dilemma in the form of a baby girl named Ayana. The court recently received the following submission from the plaintiff. My name is Angela Monroe. My son Herbert died on January 27th, 2015. After my son passed, a young lady named Shanika Reed, which is the defendant, told me that she was pregnant from my son. The baby was born on May 31st, 2016. I really would like to know. Angela Monroe, discussing her close relationship with her late son, was unaware of Shaneka Reed's pregnancy until after his death. Shaneka claimed that her relationship with Angela's son was serious, stating he desired her as a lifelong companion from early in their relationship. So, Ms. Monroe, you were very close to your son. Yes. He lived with you? Yes. And did he ever tell you about this relationship, the fact that he may have a baby on the way? Knowing my son, he would come to me about certain things, but when it came to her being pregnant, that wasn't mentioned to me at all. Tensions escalate between both mommies regarding their respective relationships with the deceased son. Reed claims they shared a serious, integrated life, but Miss Monroe disputes her characterizations and financial dealings with her son. Miss Reed accuses Miss Monroe of jealousy, while Miss Monroe solemnly refers to her son's passing as the ultimate separation, diminishing Miss Reed's assertion. My son moved us from one place to another. He searched for apartments, but it's it was in both of our names. But then when you telling me 
he got money for me to give to you? Yes, no, because I don't he was have jealous. no knowledge of that. He thought but I was one, taking, taking your son away from you. Me, nobody can't take my son. God took my son from me. Defendant explains the circumstances that led her to move in with Miss Monroe, citing her cousin's request for her to assume responsibility for Miss Monroe's hospital trips, a task previously managed by the deceased son. Although working full time and raising two children. All right, let's get some control, no, ladies. No, no, I do no, want to no, hear no, this. Yeah, I want to understand this, but I need to hear it one at a time. Mm -mm, okay. Mm -mm. So, uh, mm -mm. now this is what I want to understand. How did you ever get to the point where you're moving in? Because I was living with my cousin at the time. She wanted me to move in to take over the responsibilities of running back and forth to the hospital with her. they the same stuff that her son was doing. The plaintiff initially accepted the baby, as per the discussion with Judge Lake. There is a moment of reflection about the past when Miss Monroe's son invited Miss Reed to stay with them because she had nowhere to go. Miss Reed underscores her belief in her relationship with the son and his acknowledgement of the pregnancy. Who take me so long to quiet you all down? I forgot what I was going to ask. Uh, this is what. But I no, no, hear. hold on, Miss Monroe. At first, did you accept the baby? At first, so you I, said after, after I'm, okay, I'm accepting his baby for the first four months. But then, things and you went, tell her she can come and live if she wants. This was when she was pregnant. Because my son did ask, could she come stay there? Judge Lake emphasizes understanding and reflects on how the possible father, Miss Monroe's son, would not want to see such discord. Miss Monroe is willing to support Ayana if she is her grandchild, but insists on maintaining respect and boundaries in any relationship moving forward, all while trying to uphold the respect she and her late son held. All right, ladies, we made it this far. All I'm trying to do is understand how we got to this place. Because I will say one thing. I know your son, if this is his baby, I know he doesn't want to see this because this won't just be happening in this courtroom. This will be happening around Ayana. Yeah, yeah, and I do not want my daughter around it. You can't. I'm not going to be around. I'm not in a position to be arguing with anybody. For three years, the drama of Miss Simpson and her son has been chasing Mr. Dansby. Miss Simpson had him completely roped in, but now Mr. Dansby snapped, and he wants an answer without any of the drama. Why did it take Mr. Dansby three years to petition the DNA results? So, Mr. Dansby, why is it it's taking you three years to petition the court for a DNA test? Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Um, the reason why it took three years, ma'am, because Miss Simpson, she, she, she had been lying to me. She had been, it was so much shade. She had another dude who she was dealing with. I mean, it was one particular really? morning I had caught. No. The biggest red flag for Mr. Dansby is how Miss Simpson hasn't ever let him meet their son. She's been dragging him into all this drama of paternity, but the poor guys never met the boy. They used to be in a relationship long ago, but then Mr. Dansby caught Miss Simpson having sex with her phone guy. Point blank. How and I asked you about this it. lady and you stand, you will stand with me. If that's the case, why would I have Mr. You Dansby, the man told you that she was his lady? Yes. And then what did you say? No. I, I, I spoke with her about it. I thought he heard So you all boy. just hung up. After that, you hung up, and then that's when you had the conversation yes, with her. Yes, yes, Right after he caught her, she told him she was pregnant. Initially, he was going to believe her, but then he realized the baby could be the phone guy. But his doubts were confirmed when she called him one day and said it's not his baby. When did she say this? She, okay, in that case, It was like, oh, it was in three months after, before he was even born. It was not three months. It was not three months. I had well, hold no on, hold on. I want to understand this. Get me to this conversation three months before the baby was even born where you say she told you the baby wasn't even yours. I asked, we was over, the, we was talking over the phone and uh, she somewhat got an attitude with me. Why would Miss Simpson do that? Even the judge is tired of the drama in the courtroom. She just wants straight answers. Miss Simpson proclaims that she was too stressed out by Mr. Dansby not playing a part in their boy's life, so the best way was to get him kicked out of the equation and bring in another man. He bringing up another man. Miss Simpson, did it you? Were, were you man. with anyone else? Were you sleeping with anyone else? It was a possibility of someone else, so. So you admit there was another man? Yes, Your Honor, it was. At what point did you admit to Mr. Dansby that there was another man. It was maybe three months into the pregnancy. The biggest shocker was when the boy was born and Miss Simpson didn't even invite Mr. Dansby to the hospital. Later on, Mr. Dansby was angry to discover how the phone guy was called to the hospital. And then she didn't let Mr. Dansby meet the baby boy for three years. As far as me and her getting together, sitting down and talking like grown people about Tanaris, she, she, it was all talk, no, no action with Miss Simpson. Miss Simpson stayed and so three hours in a away. year, though, Mr. Dansby, I stayed three hours now. You couldn't get a ride for an hour and a half or a bus. Time, or... Now, it, 
judge, Your Honor. It had been times where I had people, I had rides to lined up to take me to visit Miss Simpson and to Nars. Put the drama away for a while because it seems like despite Miss Simpson's antics, Mr. Dansby wants to connect with this boy if he's his son. He's got three daughters and he grew up without a father. He wouldn't wish this on anyone else. Should Judge Lauren take out the results? Mr. Dansby, you are Tenoris's father. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Dansby, you had a right to be doubtful. I know, man. I mean... You I did. And ultimately, Miss Simpson admitted that. Miss Mangrum discusses the moment Miss Schools informed her about being pregnant with her deceased son Dominique's child. This took place at the hospital on June 23rd, amid the trauma of Dominique being shot. Miss Mangrum expresses skepticism about the paternity from the outset, providing a glimpse into the tension and disbelief embedded in the interaction between the two women. Miss Mangrum, you're here today after losing your son to a violent crime. You say the defendant, Miss Schools, is claiming your deceased son is her child's father, which you say is impossible. Yeah. Miss Schools, you say you have no doubt that Mr. Mangrum fathered your child, and today you will prove it to his family. How did you find out about Miss School's pregnancy? The situation intensifies as Miss School's recounts an emotional moment beside Dominique's hospital bed, suggesting Miss Mangrum was comforting her during her pregnancy. However, Miss Mangrum vehemently denies these events ever happened. A dispute over a Facebook message adds another layer to their conflict as they argue over the communications, highlighting the distressing miscommunications between them. I got your message. So I'm sitting right there and I'm, I'm just crying. I, I see him hooked up to all this stuff and I'm pregnant, so I'm very emotional at the time. So I'm crying and I sit down right beside him, beside his bed, and she's rubbing on my back. Everything is going to be okay. Don't worry. No, yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No. That did not I That didn't happen. I'm so sorry. Oh no. Miss Schools maintained that she informed Miss Mangrum's family throughout her pregnancy and that they exchanged supportive messages. While she alleges that Miss Mangrum visited the hospital after her daughter's birth and acknowledged a resemblance to the deceased, Miss Mangrum denies the likeness with a dismissive laugh. So let's fast forward to when baby Dominique was born. You have the baby. During that time, do you keep in touch with Ms. Course, Mangrum and her like, family? During the whole pregnancy, I kept I kept them updated with everything. My baby shower. She sent me little forwarded messages off Facebook with prayers and stuff, telling me she loved me and you know she's coming to the hospital to see me and my baby and stuff like that. And she she came. She Miss Mangrum expresses frustration at Miss School's persistent claims of paternity involving her deceased son leading to heightened emotions and arguments in the discussion. Judge Lake notes the tangible pain Miss Mangrum experiences, observing that the constant reminder of her son through Miss School's child might be an unbearable reminder of her loss. All oh, that is it. So while we're here, That's I told you, I told you leave it. it alone. My the baby was fine when she here was is at. Because no, I'm sick no, and I'm tired. I'm tired of that. that. She was fine when she was daddy, at. Daddy, got a grandma. Watch she over got the baby. baby. So why are we here? If the daddy, stop saying it. She got, she got one. If he ain't the okay, daddy, let's follow. I told you leave it alone. Ladies, ladies, Judge Lake acknowledges the complex emotions and communication difficulties between Miss Mangrum and Miss Schools, especially considering the sensitive situation surrounding the child named after Miss Mangrum's late son. She recognizes that Miss Schools may not have acted with malicious intent, while Miss Mangrum might have struggled to process the situation, resulting in tension and conflict between them. I hear you. And now we're in court today because there is a beautiful little girl. And she is. And she's named after your son. Yeah, yeah. Dominique Samaya. She's a very pretty baby. Her husband even told me I can name the baby after him. Like, I was going to name my baby that regardless, but he gave me the honest to name, give them the last name. You know, I was more close with the father. He came to me with open arms. Mr. Mangrum recalls a moment when his son, accompanied by Miss Schools, informed him of her pregnancy and expressed his acceptance based on his son's words. He conveys a wish to remain involved, regardless of the turmoil between the ladies, and indicates an inclination to believe that the child might indeed be his grandchild. My son told me that she was pregnant. He didn't just tell me that she was pregnant. She was right there when he told me. When was that? Because he ain't never brought her over to the house. When did you see her? She never got out of the car. I'm not here to argue. I met Amber, and I accepted what my son told me. I know it's difficult, sir. Take your time. Yeah, it is. It's just, it's just a fight. You know what I'm saying? between them and it's like. In a heated court dispute, Miss McBirth seeks a DNA test to disprove that her son, Mr. Hughes, is the father of Miss Jackson's child, Elijah, and is also suing for defamation. Miss McBirth strongly denounces Miss Jackson, highlighting Elijah's dissimilar looks to her family as a pivotal argument. Mr. Hughes, you say you're stuck between your mother and your ex-girlfriend. 
who are in a heated dispute in court today. Ms. McBurg, you petitioned the court for a DNA test to prove your son, Kakitho Hughes, is not the father of Ms. Jackson's two-year-old son, Elijah Jackson. Ms. Jackson, who has a contrasting view, is puzzled by Ms. McBurg's doubt about the paternity of her child, suggesting skin color might be a point of contention. While Ms. McBurg ridicules the child's appearance, Ms. Jackson insists on the validity of her relationship with Mr. Hughes, despite skepticism. So, Ms. Jackson, obviously you have a different opinion. So why do you think she's in so much doubt over your child? I have no idea, to be honest. Like, maybe because he is so white? Because he's all the white white. He ain't got no black I, in here. Everything I see got a mm -hmm. uh, powder puff on it. I don't see no chocolate nowhere, okay? No, ma'am. Whatever. Miss McBirth recounts seeing Elijah, noting his lighter skin and concluding he's not her family's. She's firm that he's not her grandson. Discussions about racial identity and paternity are interspersed with various claims about the clarity and consistency of information on fatherhood, pointing toward conflicting stories and possible misinformation. Is my son. That's not gonna happen. No, I, I think she's more so obsessed. So Miss McBirth, oh. tell me about the first time you met Elijah. I seen him at the doctor's office where I was taking his real children to the doctor, and it was a newborn, and I walked past him, and I kind of looked, glanced over there, and I seen this little white baby. I knew it wasn't mine, and I ain't had nothing else to say or do about it since then. The conversation becomes chaotic with multiple individuals speaking. Miss McBirth is adamant that Elijah isn't her son's child and expresses frustration over multiple paternity claims against her family. Miss Jackson and Miss McBirth exchange accusations, pointing out inconsistencies in stories and alleging dishonesty about relationships and lifestyle, creating a tense atmosphere filled with distrust and animosity. I want to understand this. Was he there when you had the baby? No. It was another guy, that's why. There was nobody else there but my mom and my sister. Your mom is in Germany, so you said, when did these people come? I caught mom over here in the States. So you just got caught in another lie. I'm sick of all these little hookers trying to say my son is a daddy. I'm okay. sick of it. You I get babies dropped off here, dropped off there. I'm sick I'm not of it. it. But it, it stops what she today. Does, what she that does. baby is here's, not my here's, son. Here's. Miss McBirth acknowledges her son's appeal and activities, but firmly rejects the possibility that Elijah is his child, even in light of his intimacy with Miss Jackson. Despite emotional photos and possibilities suggested by Judge Lake, she adheres to her belief that the child isn't related to them. He's a handsome guy. He's my son. Son. <laughs> and I know what he do. But he still, no matter what he do, he's still gonna be my son. So Please. hold on one second. Just take a look at the monitor. <sighs> when you look at this picture... It make me want to throw up. It seems like your son is kissing the baby. It makes you want to throw up. It makes me want to throw up because Why? it's a lie. For your son to be kissing an innocent child? Because it's not his. Mr. Barlow disputes the paternity of Miss Winslow's son, Jabril, pointing out physical dissimilarities and expressing doubts rooted in the circumstances during the time of conception. He suggests infidelity on Miss Winslow's part with the landlord during his absence, which she counters by asserting that he was present enough to be the biological father. Mr. Barlow, you say your eight kids look exactly exactly like you, but the defendant's son, Jabril, looks nothing like you. And that's because you're not his father. And you know who is. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Winslow, you stand in court stating that Mr. Barlow is your son's biological father, but also say if he's not, there's a good reason for it. In a courtroom exchange, Mr. Barlow expresses skepticism regarding the landlord's late-night visits to Miss Winslow's home for repair work, implying potential infidelity. Miss Winslow defends the visits, explaining that the landlord personally handles all maintenance tasks in her building, even during late hours, to address urgent issues like a leaky roof, especially while she was pregnant. I'm calling it 10 p.m. Oh, and you, he there. You call at 10 and, his, and he's there. Yeah, the land, he no, the landlord's at the house at 10 p.m. Yeah, and you know why, Your Honor? And stuff. You know why you got bitch. You know why you got together the beds? Yeah. You know why you like, got because he, got... he doesn't have contractors. He he does things so his in a so three story building this. himself. He doesn't have a hired contractor. Mr. Barlow questions the landlord's financial and personal interactions with Miss Winslow, suggesting the landlord might have had ulterior motives for accepting three hundred dollars instead of the two thousand five hundred dollars discussed. Miss Winslow defends, asserting the landlord was sympathetically assisting a single mother. Barlow further implies that the landlord purchasing and assembling furniture might indicate a a relationship beyond that of tenant and landlord. So, Mr. Barlow, your point was he may have been interested in her or something because she, instead of the $2,500 that was... Who gonna take 300 He just took $300. Someone who feels sorry for All a right, now check this out. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I, I'm taking $300 <laughs> from you out of 25. I'm a businessman now. But yet, 
You didn't just give me the other 2200, but I'm buying you furniture. Miss Winslow explains that Mr. Barlow's insecurities regarding the landlord arose when he realized the landlord was younger than he expected. Mr. Barlow, noticing the landlord spending time with his family, like sharing ice cream and playing football with the kids, becomes suspicious and questions the landlord's presence and activities with his family, finding him too involved. Mr. Barlow didn't know what the landlord looked like, so when he finally saw the landlord, he was like, oh, I thought the landlord was old. When he found out he was around our age, that's when his insecurities came in. I came home one time, I just You're pop honored. up, right? I pop up one time, they crossing the street. I think the dude is stranger, because I ain't never met him yet. And so they walking across the street, and I'm like, yo, I approach all of them. Hey, what y'all doing with this stranger? Do, what you doing with my children? Miss Winslow, emotional, reveals to Judge Lake that she seriously questions whether she is Jabril's biological mother due to numerous instances where others have commented on his dissimilar appearance to her. She presents research indicating that approximately 28,000 babies get switched at birth in hospitals, contributing to her doubts. You're saying that you question whether or not you're this child's mother. Yes, I And this do. is really upsetting you. you. You're serious. Yes, I'm serious because every day when I go somewhere, whether it's the grocery store, where there is, wherever we go, the doctor, we went to a place for my kids to jump, jungle gym jumping and a woman, a, a Hispanic lady sat there and she was like, is he Hispanic? In a heartfelt moment in Judge Lake's courtroom, the judge confirms with a probability of 99.99999% that Miss Winslow is indeed Jabril's biological mother, dismissing her fears that they were not biological logically related due to a potential hospital mix-up. Relieved, Miss Winslow thanks the judge, while attention shifts back to Mr. Barlow and his doubts regarding his paternity of Jabril. So I needed to go back to my chambers, I needed to do some research, I needed to look through the results. I had to find the maternity portion of the results so that I could confirm whether or not you are in fact Jabril's mother. These results state that the probability of maternity is 99.9999. Miss <laughs> Winslow emotionally admits to still loving Mr. Barlow despite his wrongdoings and defends the landlord's presence in their life as a necessity in Mr. Barlow's frequent absences. Mr. Barlow, however, expresses a firm belief that the landlord's involvement was excessive. So it's not like it's just like a little simple thing like he hasn't done anything to me. He has done the most. Which, yes, as a woman, which, which I stand here with my backbone and to I've leave. accepted all of his wrongdoing. And I still love him to death, with the, to the bottom of my heart. So why would I wait till Excuses he's- Excuses are best for those who use them. You understand what I'm saying? Mr. Barlow, despite doubts, signed the birth certificate and was present during delivery, affirming a commitment to not miss a day of Jabril's life if he is the father. He indicates previous absences in his other eight children's lives and doesn't want to repeat. He admits to mentioning a DNA test at the time of signing. So, Mr. Barlow, this is your name? Yes, Listed as the name. father on the birth certificate. Yes, it is. So, so you, he didn't I was it. there during the delivery. I was there to sign the birth certificate and because there's no way for me to say this is not my child. I got nine children, and out of those other eight children, there's been spots in their life that I missed. 